Clam chowder is a really popular dish, especially in coastal cities like Maine, Boston, Seattle, and San Francisco, where seafood is a major draw. Although here in SF, we didn't invent it, we pretty much appropriated it. It's the most popular form of chowder, and we put a West Coast spin to it and put it into a sourdough bread bowl, which, in my opinion, totally makes it and is what makes it so fun. And since it's a chilly summer day, which you can only say in this city, we're headed out to find the perfect bowl of creamy goodness. Chowders are a delicious form of stew, usually thickened with cream, although in the olden days they used dissolved crackers and hardtack. Modern versions will sometimes use roux, which is a mixture of flour and butter. It was first invented by sailors and fishermen, so it generally included bits of seafood in it. Here in the U.S., it started with the early pilgrims in the New England area, thus the term New England clam chowder for that white stuff. Although, interestingly, European settlers did not eat clams, and they used it more for pig slop. It was the Native American Indians who introduced them to the concept of clams as an edible ingredient in the chowders. Other ingredients include bacon, onion, celery, and sometimes potatoes. When tracking down the best bowls, the obvious place to start is right here at Fisherman's Wharf. The OG of clam chowder bread bowls is Boudin Bakery, which is located right across from the crab stalls off Taylor. It was first started in 1849 by French master baker Isidore Boudin, and they actually still use his French baking techniques and wild yeast starter to this day. The flagship store Bistro Boudin is located right here on Fisherman's Wharf and is totally an experience unto itself. It's got this wide open kitchen, so you can see them making the bread fresh daily. And it's got this trippy conveyor belt, which distributes bread all around the facility. So in my opinion, the clam chowder is only about average. What really makes it is the sourdough. It's tangy, chewy, moist, spongy, just what sourdough should be. It actually perfectly matches the chowder, which is creamy and has got that beautiful ocean taste from the clams, and that perfectly matches the tanginess of the sourdough. The chowder here is on the thicker side, and I love how it's almost like a dip, so that it clings to the sourdough when you dunk it in. The bread bowl itself is pretty big, and I usually don't finish it, so if there's two of you, you might want to share. If you love the chowder, they actually can it, and you can buy it in the canned soup aisle of most major grocery stores here in the U.S. For you international visitors, you can buy it right here in their retail store. Before or after your feast, make sure you come upstairs where there's a little sourdough museum that goes over the history of sourdough, and also how San Francisco's unique foggy environment contributes to the rising process. Even though they have stores all throughout California, they still periodically ship out starter dough from this location here in SF just to keep the integrity of the product. For more luxe experience, hop across to Pier 39. We're here at Fog Harbor Fish House on Pier 39. This tourist area was developed by Warren Simmons, a local entrepreneur and commercial pilot who also founded several restaurants here, including the Fog Harbor Fish House. The restaurant is now run by his son, Scooter, and fun fact, the Simmons family also founded the popular Chevy's Tex-Mex chain, which was sold in 1993 to PepsiCo's Taco Bell brand. This is more of a nice sit-down or date-night experience, and you definitely get the million-dollar Fisherman's Wharf views along with it. Their seafood is super fresh and follows the Monterey Bay Aquarium sustainability guidelines. And if you order the chowder, you can get a cup, bowl, or bread bowl. The bread bowl, by the way, is baked here in-house and uses the boudin starter. If you want boudin sourdough but want just a little bit of a nicer experience, you definitely have to come here. And while the chowder is nice, you have to top it off with their fresh Dutchess crab. The 
Clock Harbor chowder is made with a roux, which is butter and flour instead of cream, and so it's definitely on the thicker side. Look at that tasty bite with big, juicy chunks of Dungeness crab. Quite delish. Oh yeah, that crab definitely makes it. Mix it in a little bit with the chowder and it gives it a whole new dimension. The clams in this chowder are super nice, way better than boudins. You've got nice, fat, chunky bits of it. This one has the chunks of celery and potatoes, although the pieces are so small, they're kind of lost in the chowder. They gave me little bits of parsley just to dress the plate, but I think it would do a much better job in the chowder. Now let's taste it. Oh yeah, that's that extra fresh herbal notes that I uh, was missing before. So my one complaint with this bread bowl is that they've completely hollowed all the bread out of it. Where's the beef? I want to be able to rip off chunks and dip it. What the hey? Okay, I'm gonna try with this. The dog test. We're going to wrap up our tour of the Fisherman's Wharf clam chowder scene at the Funky and Hipster Argonaut Hotel. Located right next to it is its hotel restaurant, the Blue Mermaid Chowder House and Bar, which was originally opened in 2003 but was renovated in 2017 to match the reno of the hotel. Both are located in the historic Hassett Warehouse, which was opened in 1909 as the Del Monte Cannery. For those that love a little variety, they've got three different types of chowders that you can order as a trio of chowders. There is what I call a San Francisco style crab and corn chowder, the red Manhattan style chowder, and of course your traditional New England white chowder. It's no longer on the menu, but ask your server for a variant of the trio combo, which is on the menu. Well, all three are stellar. Their true standout is the crab and corn chowder, which is made with crab stock, bacon, celery, onions, papilla peppers, potatoes, cream, cream cheese, and lots of tasty chunks of Dungeness crab and corn. It's spiced with some Old Bay seasoning, chipotle, jalapeno, thyme, and topped with a cilantro pesto. Take a look at how tasty that looks. Mm. That is just chock full of veggies and bacon and crab. It's got this nice smoky, cheesy taste to it. And even though it's not spicy, you can definitely taste the peppers in the back of your throat and the scallions and the cilantro drizzle add a really nice punch to the whole thing. For time, I'm not reviewing the other chowders here, but I'll include a full review of Blue Mermaid and bonus footage. That was really outstanding and my favorite chowders thus far. All right, let's get out of here. There's more chowders to taste and more of San Francisco to see. If you're a seafood purist, this next one's just for you. We're here at the Ferry Building and the San Francisco outpost of Hog Island Oyster Farm. Hog Island is an oyster farm started by two marine biologists and located about an hour and a half north of San Francisco in Tamales Bay. If you have a car and you can get up there, I would totally recommend that you eat at their outdoor oyster bar that's located right next to their oyster farm beds. It's a truly unique experience. If that whets your interest, I've got a vid up here of my visit to it last year. Reservations recommended. But the Ferry Building restaurant isn't such a bad alternative. The line queues up outside. It looks bad, but it actually moves pretty fast. So the chowder here is a pure luxury item. Look at that, 16 bucks. In addition to oysters, Hog Island also raises manila clams, which are fat and juicy. 
Instead of just the fleshy bits, this chowder uses the entire manila clam, which is dredged fresh from the bay just this morning and lightly steamed. The flavoring from the shells and the clam juice give it that extra umami. They also throw in a ton of tasty vegetables like potatoes, celery, leeks, onions, and of course, a lot of tasty bacon. Now I will say that even though this is the most expensive chowder on this list, the ingredients are very high quality. That's so delicious. It's super creamy without being thick and the broth is just so rich. That umami is fantastic. It definitely tastes like the ocean without being fishy. And there's this freshness from the herbs that they've added in there. Here are the little bits of carrots. Sweet and tender. Look at that, that's a giant half of a Yukon potato there. Good thing I have a big mouth to eat this. That clam is so fresh and so tender. You don't even have to chew it, you can almost just swallow it whole. Look like how giant these little pieces of manila clams are. Very, very meaty, and that's why it's a $16 bowl of chowder. Oh my God, guys, that was so good. That pile of clams was not just at the top. Went all the way to the bottom of the bowl. I think I ate probably like two dozen clams there. I'm so full, but I think I have enough room for one more pit stop. So let's go. Start on a high note and end on a high note. One of the most famous clam chowders in the whole of the Bay Area is Sam's Chowder House, located in Half Moon Bay. You don't actually need to drive the hour down the coastline to get at it since they actually have a food truck that does the SF circuit. On Sundays, they're right here at the Presidio Picnic. If you want to know more about this mega lunch truck event, see my bit up here. Sam specializes in East Coast seafood like clam chowder and the lobster rolls. And with their location right next to the bay, they definitely have good access to local seafood and also to the awesome produce at the farms down in Half Moon Bay. All of their seafood follows the sustainability guidelines of the Monterey Bay Aquarium. So usually if you go to the restaurant, a cup will run you about $8.50. This one here, a little bit smaller, about six bucks off the truck. This chowder is chock full of stuff. They start with little neck clams and add in huge chunks of potatoes. You can see bits of celery and substantial sizes of bacon in it. The broth is a little on the thinner side. They make this in the true authentic New England style. So there's very, very little flour in it. Okay, we gotta get a little of everything in the first bite. A little potato, a little bit of celery, a little bit of bacon there. Of course, uh, oyster cracker. Mm. That's delicious. Even though this is thinner, it's still pretty creamy, and I would say that the clam's not as pronounced in this, but the clam pieces are pretty big and chunky in here, and with all the other giant pieces of veggies, it actually tastes pretty much like a true chowder. Okay, so one of the hazards of eating outside is the wind came by and totally blew my oyster crackers away, so I had to dump the rest of them in here. Personally, I think oyster crackers are a must. They provide that little bit of texture and crunchiness to what's otherwise a pretty creamy mouthfeel. Yep, that's the best comfort food ever. My tummy is now nice and warm from all that chowda, and I think I'm ready for a little bracingly windy walk along the coastline. It's my usual post-presidio picnic walk just to work off a little of this food. I know I haven't even covered a fraction of the fantastic options that are available here in SF, let alone in the wider Bay Area. So if you've got a favorite that you think is the bomb and that I missed, leave the recommendations for us all down in the comments. And if you like my list, go ahead and smash that like button. Thanks for watching and until next time, peace.